you ask a stupid question, you ask a repetitive question, the staff face will change. Like, mm. Madam, I have told you now, I have told you that this thing, this is where you sign. You sign here. Mm. It's not the one in Nigeria, they will force you, Oga. If this gene no size you, you don't know, say the thing no size you when you buy them. You go take another gin for here. Oh. <laughs> they will force you to use that money <laughs> to buy another thing. Which Igbo man will count money and return to you? <laughs> oh no, cool, me, man. It cannot happen. So hello guys. What's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. <laughs> it's me, your girl Barista Neze, and this is Neze Peperebe. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel guys and today's video is going to be a very laid down funny chit chat video okay today i'm going to be gisting you guys my culture shocks <laughs> as a proper niger babe a proper Igbo girl i'm going to be gisting you guys my osofia in london moment since i arrived canada so it's been a few months since we relocated to canada if you're just seeing me for the first time hello my name is chineze but you can call me neze or barista neze or neze peperepe oh yes that is me <laughs> so i have my family my husband and children just relocated from nigeria all the way to the other side of the world and in this video i'm going to be chatting you guys and telling you all the culture shocks that i have experienced since i landed this country so let us go there the first culture shock that i experienced was the waste management arrangement <laughs> does mean <laughs> was the way they had to do that does mean here my dear brothers and sisters in nigeria we have one big bucket <laughs> one big dustbin you throw everything inside but here when we first arrived the airbnb we saw that there were different dustbins different colors ah, ah. we're like which one is this one it was my husband that now told me that see the waste here the way they manage the waste here, the way they dispose waste here is different there is the green bin the black bin and the blue bin do you know the funny thing when i saw the green bin i just automatically assumed green has to do with life with nature and all those kind of things so i just automatically assumed that the green bin is for recycle <laughs> so my dear brothers and sisters i was throwing recycling in fact there eh, it was a tough one for me to even remember somebody wants to throw those bin before you throw those bin you first think okay blue where will this one enter Chineke namo, see me see wahala. To throw away those bin again, you first crack your head and do arithmetics to know where you are going to throw the those bin away. So that is it. That was our first culture shock. That was my first culture shock in Canada. It was not something I was used to, and it really took some time for me to get used to. So, let us move to the next one. The next major culture shock. The next Osofia in London moment that I experienced when I relocated to Canada was the fact that you are going to buy your own nylon. <laughs> One name yam of politin bag. Come to hear this bread. Mbano. Odiro na Canada. <laughs> in Nigeria, my dear brothers and sisters, shall when you go to supermarkets after buying your provisions or groceries or whatever you buy, the attendants will pack everything for you inside nylon. <laughs> Here, they're not going to pack it for you first and foremost though. Most of the stores I go to, they will just scan it and you are going to be the one packing it. That is one. But that one did not get me angry. I say, okay, no, let me do it myself. The main cocoa is, after you finish packing your things, ah yeah, sweethearts, give me politin bag. Nyem politin bag, dear, because nyem one black. <laughs> for where? <laughs> you have to buy the nylon bag or bring from the house it was so crazy for me to get used to as in after buying something how much is nylon that you cannot pack my things inside nylon even if you buy something worth three hundred thousand naira or whatever you still have to buy the bag to pack it or you have to come with yours so what i started doing was i have a nylon filled with nylons in the car all right so when i go shopping i'll just come down with my own nylon bag and just pack everything inside when we just came i kept on forgetting i kept on buying it was so annoying because i had so many of the bags at home and it was so annoying to have to go out there and start buying another one so that's a major culture shock because in nigeria you are entitled to your nylon bag another thing that happens in the supermarket hey god where you want to pay see eh? 
there are some things that you just as in you're so used to that you just act it's you just act on it impulsively like first i went to the supermarket was it superstore where did i go to that day was it shoppers drug mart when they finished calculating everything i just handed my card to the attendant it was the person that i went with like as in she had to pinch me like no 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 you're not sitting by yourself i was like chimo Mm. so in case you do not know do not forget or in case you know and you forget like me please you do not hand over your debit card or credit card or whatever card to anybody nobody should even touch it when they are done compiling your things you slot in or swipe or whatever you want to do with your card by yourself you pack your things by yourself you put it in your own nylon and you carry your cart away thank you the next cultural shock that i experience in this beautiful country of canada is the return policy oh my god this one is this one is good news hey <laughs> i remember back then when we were young when we go to buy bread and we forget to check that the bread is soft <laughs> We now come back home and our mothers now discover that you've gone to buy stale bread or strong bread. <laughs> they now send you back <laughs> to the woman to go and return the bread, my dear brothers and sisters. You know how, you know as that journey they go. As you are heading back to Mama Obunna's shop or Mama Ekaite, you are sweating and panicking because you know what the woman will do to you when you come to return something. Even when you just bought the thing one minute ago, <laughs> what betide you come and return it? What the woman will use her mouth to tell you that day, you regret the day you were born. <laughs> so many of us from Nigeria grew up with that no return policy. Even if you just bought that stuff one second ago. But here, oh my God, it was such a beautiful culture shock. I will not call this one shock. Culture blessing. <laughs> when I experienced the, oh God, the trust that these people have for fellow human beings. The way the customer service works, they always want to please you. They do not want you to be stressed. They do not want you to be frustrated. They do not want you to have a negative impression of their brand. I don't know whether you guys watched that vlog or when I changed my freezer. <laughs> see me see me game. Freezer that I have used for two months. When we started shopping for winter stuff and we started cooking in bulk and buying things in bulk, I didn't realize that the freezer couldn't contain most of the things I had. <laughs> I said, what do I do? I asked my husband, should we buy another freezer? We don't have so much space here. We already have the big standing freezer that came with the house. We have this other freezer here. Then buying a third freezer, where are we going to put it? The whole house will be stuffed up. It's not like we have a basement or something. What do we do? I was so confused. I was like, huh? And it's more than two months. What do we do? I then told my husband that I was going to call them and see if they could change it. My husband was like, ah, forget. How can they change it? Even if they want to take. For the fact that you've used it. Mirianu na miri tomato. Have already stained the whole freezer. You now want to tell them to come and take it. Who is going to buy it? So my husband just told me that, ah, is this, they're not going to take it. It's not doable. But me now, you know, me, I always like to try things out by myself to see. I'm not the kind of person that just sits back and assumes that something will not work. I will try. Then if it fails, I'll know that, okay, I tried and it failed, right? So I called these guys, though, and I told them that I want another freezer. <laughs> I was thinking that they would start asking me, is the other one not working? Why do you want it? What happened? These guys didn't question me. They asked me when I bought it. I told them the dates. And it was already past one month. Would you believe that these guys told me that I should go to their site and check the one I wanted? I picked the one I wanted though. It was like $500 difference and that was all I paid. Did I even pay for delivery? I don't think I paid for delivery, did I? But would you believe that these guys came and took a freezer that I have used, dripping with ice and water and all kinds of things. We tried to clean it too, but there was only so much we could do now because we couldn't have removed our stuff and kept it on the floor. So it was when they were bringing the new ones, when they told me they were on their way, that's when I started removing the things that were already in the one that I want to return. So it was still, it still had, you know, frost and all those things. My dear, these guys came, took the old freezer and gave me a new one. I was like, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My shock is shocked. <laughs> this is a beautiful culture shock. So guys, that is how they operate here. You can buy clothes, phone, electronics, anything. They don't even care if you've used it. If you tell them, I don't want it again. You can even subscribe to maybe insurance or something. And later you tell them, I don't want it again. They would gladly take their product back and give you what you want. Even if you don't want anyone. It's not the one in Nigeria. They will force you. Oga, if this gin no size you, you don't know say the thing no size you when you buy them. 
you go take another gene for here. Oh. <laughs> they will force you to use that money <laughs> to buy another thing. Even if you don't see what you like, Mbado. <laughs> Which Igbo man will count money and return to you? <laughs> Oh no, it cool, man. It cannot happen. But here, even if you don't want to take another thing, they will gladly give you your money. And that was beautiful to experience. The first culture shock that I experienced coming here was the appointment policy. Appointment, appointment, appointment. <laughs> My dear, the thing seems like a small thing. Oh. It seems like a small thing, but it's not small. Oh. Let me paint an example to you. When we when we traveled, when we came, we came with cash, okay? So when we're done doing everything we did, wanted to do and stuff, we wanted to open a bank account and deposit the cash because we didn't want to hold too much cash in our hands, right? My sister, oh, my brother, oh, my friend, oh. <laughs> Would you believe that I went to the bank to open an account? Oh, give bank my money. <laughs> I was a banker. I know how bankers they rush. When we see people that want to open accounts, oh my god. Now we they rush them. <laughs> now we they rush them. But over here, can you believe that I got the one need to come? <laughs> Mama Mado like me. I dressed up, wore shoe, wore wig, went to bank, told them that I want to open accounts. These people sent me back home that should book appointment. Uh -uh. I said, mm -hmm. is this not staff here? Can't I fill account opening form? Why are you sending me back home? With my I didn't come to take loan, no. brother. I didn't come to take loan. I came to give you money. And you say I should go back with my money? Hey! Is my eyes paining me here or what? <laughs> it was shocking. I was shocked. My dear, these guys had to book me more than one month after the date I came. Like, 35 days after that that's their next available appointment that that's when i can come and open the account i say see you people are not scared i'll go to another place and open an account and you will lose me hey so my dear hmm, these guys can do appointments appointments everything appointments doctor appointment school appointment this person appointment and when you go here you won't see crowd you don't say what are you appointing me for no it is just one person in this shop can't two of us do the same thing here why are you appointing me? So, <laughs> that is why anything you want to do, you have to plan ahead. You have to strategize and map it out properly because it's not, it's not a place where you can just stand up and say, I want to go here. I want to go there. That person you are going to needs an appointment before the person sees you. So it was a major culture shock for me because that was not the way we operate in Nigeria. But it's nice. It makes everything very systematic and planned and we're getting used to it. So let us move to the next one. Another culture shock in Canada that I experience, God, is the extreme, kind, nice and pleasant nature of these people like <laughs> sometimes you ask yourself don't you people get angry you would waste somebody's time you would ask them so many questions you know how nigerian customer service is now you and i we know even if a staff is smiling by the time you ask one or two questions you ask a stupid question you ask a repetitive question the staff face will change like mm. madam i have told you now I have told you that this thing, this is where you sign. You sign here. Mm. <coughs> hey, my dear. That is what your neighbor is used to. Even if you see a nice staff, you will be treading carefully so you don't overstep your boundaries before the staff will change it for you. But over here, I'm not saying that there are no exceptions. There are no general rules. I used to see some people say, NZ, it is not everybody. It cannot be everybody. Nothing is absolute. I'm talking about a majority. Okay? So, a majority of these people here are pleasant it's really those that occupy public offices they understand the meaning of customer care you have i've never encountered any front desk person that is nasty like nigeria you go to some telecoms company or you go to some banks or you go somewhere and the customer care the face is like winch <laughs> when you see the face you yourself go to fear to ask question <laughs> but here i don't know they're so nice when you ask them say no worries no worries without their tiny voice i don't know why their voice is different from we african ladies oh our voice is cracked is it because of the early fufu <laughs> is it because of the emba they began to give us when we we're two years old that we have this deep voice <laughs> but over here the ladies have this very tiny voice yeah so what do you want to do okay if you can sit down over there i'm gonna get it ready for you and i'm gonna they are always so willing to help, always ready to go out of their way to see you satisfied. 
Ah, and trust me, if you've lived in Nigeria, eh, with that your tough skin, if you've experienced conductor in Darfo before, if you have experienced your NYSE coordinator, the woman that signs your NYSE form, if you have experienced an angry banker, when you come here and see the difference, it will be a major culture shock to you, just as it was for me. The next culture shock that we experienced here is the overt love for animals. <laughs> These guys love animals so much. My children will come back home, they will tell me, my teacher said that her children are dogs. My teacher said my children are two cats. <sighs> and I'm like, hell, Jesus, children are the dogs. It's all right. My own children are human beings created by God Almighty. Okay? <laughs> if you see the amount of time and energy and resources they dedicate to their pets, like they take the pets to the vet, constant medical checkup, strolling the pets, they even pay people to come and babysit the pets if they need to go to work. Some of the pets are diabetic, some of them have glaucoma, some of them have different kind of issues. You see them taking them to the doctor, giving them medication, eye drop. God, they care for and oh my god. Sometimes you just bite your fingers and say, these animals are being treated better than some human beings where I'm coming from. I'm telling you, one light a lie. No insults. They really have value for living things. Let me just say it that way. They value human beings, they value animals. You cannot just go out and maybe just stone an animal or just kill an animal and hey you dare not when you're driving you see fellow human beings who put strap dog beside them that's their company that's their husband or wife they are not married some of them don't even want children at all that dog is their child or their wife they will strap the dog they'll be in the car maybe smoking and the dog will be there smiling with them i'm like hell oh, it's all right where i come from <laughs> I need a link it out. We, we eat dog over there. But it's all right. <laughs> we will try and get used to this love and mushy mushy that you are romancing this dog with. Okay? Let us move to the next one. Another culture shock that I have experienced as a typical Nigerian babe that have relocated to Canada is of course the weather. The weather has to be spoken about because it is one of the major things that will shock you. Whether you come in summer, winter, autumn, fall, whatever weather, spring, the weather will still shock you because it's something that you are not used to, your body is not used to, your system is not used to. You might even fall sick. Like since I came, all of us in the house, we've gotten our dose of <laughs> our dose of fion fion fion. <laughs> Kata and cough and you know all those kind of you know sickness that comes with weather. We've all gotten our dose. So yes, the weather is very cold, but that was not even the shock for me because I was already prepared for that cold weather. If you're coming, you should already know that this place is extremely cold. What shocked me particularly about the weather was the fact that it can be sunny. Like before you go out, you can see your window blind. The sun is like burning in and you're like, okay, it's a sunny day. We'll be tired. You go out without jackets. <laughs> it can be sunny, as sunny as hell and still as freezing as ice. So yes, it's not only cold weather it can also be strange weather one it can be very sunny and very cold at the same time and you are like confused you're like <laughs> pick a side this weather are you cold or are you hot let me know what you are another strange thing is that the weather can change very drastically like it can be cold this second and okay you're wearing your winter jacket and the next minute you are so hot you take off a winter jacket the next minute you are cold again so the weather can be very erratic and unpredictable so your weather app is your best friend you should have a jacket in your car constantly so as the weather changes you can quickly dash out and you know dress appropriately because if you just go out and say it's a hot day and stuff you might just be out like it happened to me one day i was out shopping at the supermarket with you know regular blouse and all of that and before i could finish shopping <laughs> it was as if i was not in the same country anymore when I came out after like 15 minutes, the cold that hit me, the cold that was waiting for me outside, I had to run back inside. So that is how erratic and unpredictable the weather here can be. Very cold, yes, that's a given for the most part of the year, but also changes anyhow. So that was another culture shock for me. Coming from a place where I can literally wear tank top for the 12 months of the year. <laughs> 
The next culture shock coming from Nigeria all the way to Canada is like an extension of the last thing I just mentioned, but not really whether this culture shock has to do with daylight and nighttime. When we just came, because we came in summer, when we just came, by 10 o'clock, 10.30 sometimes, in the night, like almost midnight, everywhere is still very bright. Clear skies, bright skies. Like you'll be wondering, is this afternoon by 9 p.m. at night? But now that the winter is coming, by 5 o'clock, everywhere is pitch dark. And I hear that sometimes the darkness even comes by 3. So just imagine coming from a country where by 3, typically, the sun that is hammering you, <laughs> you cannot even explain it, to a place where by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it is dark. If you are driving, it seems as if you are driving by 11 in the midnight. It is so bad that they have to even take time, like take one hour from the time. See, I don't have energy to describe or explain what that taking time is. If you know about taking time in Canada, please drop in the comment section so other people can read and be aware because so many people do not even know that that exists in Canada. So they take one hour from night and add it to day or is it day? Explain to us in the comment section. <laughs> so this darkness and light change thing was also a major culture shock. I think I'll just bring the video to an end here. I would have continued, but it's time for my lectures and I need to run along right now. But I hope I've been able to, you know, <laughs> bring you up to speed to everything new that we have been experiencing and how we are blending in with all of them. If you're in Canada or if you're abroad at all, do let me know your own culture shocks when you just came in. What were the things that you saw and experienced that you were like, hey, somebody pinch me. What is going on here? <laughs> do share your experiences for fun down in the comment section so people can also read and learn all right so thank you so much guys for joining me today if you're new here or if you have been watching without subscribing to this pretty pepper and pear <laughs> please hit the subscribe icon drop your comments give this video a big thumbs up and turn on your bell notifications so you can be aware whenever we drop a new video okay it's me your girl barista neza and i'll see you guys in my next one for now bye